Hello and welcome to my Project Ideas YouTube channel. So in this particular program, we will be looking at how we can create a, a simple digital watch by using Java and by using the Swing framework to create a basic graphic user interface for our users. So let's look, look into the code here. We start off by importing the various uh, libraries of Java that we will be using. So we'll be using Java x.swing and, uh, and the various other uh, libraries. Now we move on to our class here. So, uh, so, so the name of our class is Digital Watch, which will implement the runnable. We will be using the runnable because we will also be using the thread here in our program here. Here we have the various different variables that we'll be using here. We have the J frame, uh, uh, variable F of type J frame. And this is the J frame where everything, where all the, all the GUI part will be implemented here. So J frame is basically like a window where we will implement the GUI. We have our thread t, so we will so we will assign this this thread to our to our uh, function called digital watch here, as you will see later. So we just have a null initialization for our thread. We have the three variables hours, minutes, and seconds that we initialize to zero, zero, and zero. This is of the int type. We have a, a, a string called time string, and this is the time string that will store the date in the hours, minutes, and seconds format, which will be printed out. And finally, we have our J button B, and this button will be implemented inside our J frame. This is this is nothing but but just a way of showing showing the time. So we will just be setting the text of the button every second to update the time, as you'll see later in the output as well, which will make it more clear. Now we move on to our first first function here called called the digital watch function, and inside this function is basically the GUI part of the code. Where we uh, where we saw that f, so we create f as our new J frame here. Then we then we have t, which is which acts as the acts as the thread, and we use the start function of the thread. So we basically want this thread to be running while we want to update the time every second. We have our button p, and this and this is the uh, this is the length, breadth, and height of the button inside our J frame. So how it will look to users. Finally, we will add the button uh, b to the J frame f. We will set the size of the JFrame and we and we'll set it to visible and make it true. Now we move on to our main uh, function here that will uh, execute the time part of the of the function. We will put this inside inside a try catch block because we will be using the class calendar. Uh, so as you can see, we, we we have the class calendar and we create an object of the calendar class called Cal. We uh, we will use the calendar class here especially because we want to get the Hours, minutes, and seconds of of that particular day at any instance, and this can all and this can only be done if we use the calendar class here, and this makes it very easy because we have several functions of this class called hour of day, minutes, and seconds, by which we can easily just import the hours, minutes, and seconds by just calling this function on this object. So as you can see, we we call this uh, function here, we get the hours. If hours more than 12, we just subtract it by 12. So we're essentially creating a 12 hour clock here. We have the minutes and similar for the seconds as well. So we have our hour, hours, minutes, and seconds here. Now we basically want to shift this format into a string format in this uh, hours, minutes, and seconds so that we have a good output to show to our users. So we call uh, an object of the simple date format class called formatter. We, we call the get time function of our cal object that we had called on top. And we and we will try to put this entire thing inside our time string. So this is what we had created first here. And once uh, so we can do that by creating the for, by by calling the format method on the formatter object that we created on top here. And we pass on the date that we get from cal time as as an argument in this uh, function here. Okay, now from, from this part, we have our entire uh, hours, minutes, and seconds format of date stored in, inside time string. And now essentially what is left for us to do is just to print out the, the time in, in the time string somehow or the other by means of a button that we had used before. So here we, we call another function here, print time. As you can see, this is the print time function here. And this print time function is nothing but just setting the text of the button to time string. So so the button will be set to whatever time, whatever minutes, seconds, and hours there is at that instant, and that will be shown to us in our in our interface. This this entire thing will get updated, but we will update it every second because that is what we want. We want the clock to show us the second uh, second increments as well. 
That is the reason why we use the sleep function on the thread and we sleep it for 1000 milliseconds, which is equal to one second. So our clock will get updated every second. Finally, we have our main method here, which will just call the, call the function digital watch. Let's see how this output looks here. If I compile the code. Yeah. Yeah, you see, this is this is how the this is how our interface looks like, and there is there's literally nothing here, just one button because as you've seen before, we had just implemented one button button, and this button you can see it implements the second every every one second later the second changes because we set the text. If I if I compare this with my computer clock here, as you can see, forty four forty five. So this time is accurately shown here. This is a twelve hour clock while this is a twenty four hour. Clock. Hope you, hope you like this video. And if you want more such projects, make sure to like, share this video and subscribe to our YouTube channel. Thank you.